Let us pray. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we are grateful that, Lord, you have gathered us in your sanctuary, this place called by your name, where, Lord, we have come to hear from you, where we have come to spend time in your presence. Lord, how we pray that, Lord, you will speak to our hearts this morning, convict our souls, so that, Lord, we will be keen to listen from you, and so that, Lord, our lives may be transformed by what, Lord, we shall hear. Lord, speak through me. We pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's have our seats. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. For sure, his nature doesn't change. He is constant. He's a constant God, regardless of the seasons that we face. I'm grateful to God. Uh, for giving us an opportunity to gather this morning and more so for me to stand before you to share his word. I would want to extend this, uh, I would want to extend my gratitude to our vicar for giving me an opportunity to stand before this congregation to share the word of God. My name, I am Samuel Ngangathande and I love God as my savior. I got born again when I was in Form 2, and I have been brought up in a home where they serve in church, and salvation has been a constant theme in our, in our household, but it was in Form 2 where I had to choose the journey to pursue Christ. And so since then, I am grateful to God that I have come this far. This week has been a week that has been full of various events. For we as St. Paulians, we lost two members on Tuesday. We had the burial of Richard Musheke. On Wednesday, we went all the way to Sabasaba to lay to rest Velvin. And um, this week is the same week where we also lost the president of Tanzania. It has been quite an eventful week. And this week is a constant reminder that we are all going through different tests of life. And um, I would just want to say, uh, because we are also going through a season of mourning as St. Paulians, because we also lost Grace Geshongo, I would want just to stand before you as a servant of God and declare that we want to come, up, come against the spirit of immature death in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to come against the spirit of premature deaths that we shall live and experience the fullness of life in the name of Jesus Christ. May that be our proclamation this morning. The sermon that I would want to speak about is based on passing the test. That's the theme of my sermon, passing the test. And we all understand that tests are quite a constant theme in our lives. We are always going through various tests. The class 8 will be beginning the exams tomorrow. The form 4s, they have begun. The examinations. Them who are sitting for paperwork, paper tests, us as adults, we are going through the tests of life, the constant tests of life. And I don't know how you are performing in the tests that we are facing of life. I don't know how your performance looks like. When the when schools were opened after the declaration by the Ministry of Health that now schools could be reopened, there was one test that the students were given so that, we could be, so that the, the Ministry of Education would understand where are our students when it comes to academia. And they were given the assessment test. We as Christians, we are constantly going through the tests that Christians go through. We always given a test every day, now and then. I don't know how you're performing in your test of life. 
That's why we sing various hymns that remind us about the tests of life. There's a song that is sung that says, Magerio ne mainge motore and do in bara no to cona get or your ton do to an age so narito he the guy the queen area can now and can aganda attend Fa fa nga gyo mai dori kore ka ken na ga gei in the book of daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 we all know the famous story of shadrach meshach and abednego they went through a test under the kingship of king nebuchadnezzar adam and eve they began their life at the Garden of Eden through a test that they were given. You should not eat from that tree. Unfortunately, they failed. We have got various tests that the men and women of God in the Word of God has, have gone through. Some passed and some failed. Then we are reminded of a text of Paul that he says, I have fought the good fight and have finished the race. I don't know if you are passing your tests. I'm in the race, moving on to you, Father. No more turning back. I'm in the race to my destiny. You as a Christian, are you passing your test? The tests of life every day. No tragerio. Every day we are going through various tests. The word of God that was, was read to us from the book of James chapter 1, verse 1 up to 8. As we read together, you could see James says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings to you. James begins by telling us that the, the 12 tribes have been scattered. They have been scattered out, of, out in various places. So these tribes are not in one place, they are scattered. And the reason as to why they are scattered is because they were going through a season of persecution. They chose to run into, in various directions to save their lives because of the kind of persecution that was going on. And we as Christians, or you as an individual, I don't know the kind of persecutions that you're going through. And James here is very careful and he gives these Christians a message that will enable them to pass the test. He gives them pointers on how to pass the test. The first exam, the first lesson that he gives these Christians, he tells them, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. For one to be able to persevere is one who will choose to stand firm. During this season when we are being tested, Point number one, if we want to pass the test, we as Christians, we must choose to stand firm and not be wavered with the tests of life. Not being taken from one angle to the other. Choosing not to, take, not to change your position. Saying, saying that I will not waver, I will stand firm in my walk. Standing firm. Not moved by what is, by not, not allowing yourself not to be moved by what is going on. When people speak about illness, you choose to speak about health. 
When people choose to speak about hopelessness, you choose to speak about hope. When people choose to speak about darkness, you choose to speak about light. Choosing to stand firm. One of the, reas one of the reasons as to why the Honorable John Pombe Magufuli will be remembered is because he stood firm. He was a man of principles. He never did anything. He was, never did anything miraculous. He just choose, chose to stand firm. That gave him an identity. That gave him a legacy. Choosing to stand firm. I don't know if we would choose to stand firm amidst the situations that we go through in life. John Pombe Magufuli, Honorable, the late chose not to be wavered by the systems of govern government. Tunasema ya kwamba ni serekali, serekali mambo inafanyangu wa hivo. But him, he chose not to go with the flow. A fish that is alive is a fish that goes against the current. But a fish that is dead, it goes with the current. It's carried by the current. We as Christians, will we choose to be like a fish, a fish that is dead, carried by every current that comes along in life, or are we going to choose to go against the current? Standing firm amidst the situations, the waves, the, wave, the waves of life, choosing to stand firm. Another gentleman that we can all reflect on is Joseph. Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 39 from verse 1 up to 22. Joseph, this young man, chose to stand firm. He was known to be a man of integrity. He was tested by his own brothers, but he stood firm. He was tested by Potiphar, but he stood firm. Firmness was identical to Joseph's life. Even when he was in prison, Joseph still stood firm. Actually, the word of God says, because Joseph was faithful to God, Joseph blessed the household of Potiphar. Are people being blessed because of you, of choosing to start standing firm? Joseph stood firm amidst the situation and even the positions that he got in life. Joseph st stood firm. He stood firm. The other bit that James gives, the message that James gives to the Christians during seasons of trials and temptations, he tells them, my friends, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. That when we are going through temptations, when we are going through trials, that we will choose to rejoice in those trials. That we will sing a song of victory, even when we are in battle. That we will sing a song of victory, even when we are in battle, in the battlefield. James tells these Christians to rejoice in trial. I know it is not easy. It calls for us to be able to change our attitude. Choosing to see diff things in different perspective. Having a different lens. Choosing to wear different lenses in different situations. He tells these Christians, you must rejoice through the trials and tribulations. We as Christians, we as St. Paulians, we are being told when we are facing trials and temptations, let us rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'll tell you to rejoice. Because when we don't rejoice, we give the evil an, an opportunity. Because when he sees our gloominess, when he sees that we are already defeated, we are, always, we are singing songs of defeat, it gives the devil an opportunity to come and take a foothold in our lives. We are being told to rejoice in our trials. It is possible to rejoice in our trials when we have got genuine faith. Because we are being told 
that an eagle, when it's raining, an eagle chooses to fly above the clouds. It chooses to rejoice in times of storm. We as Christians, we have been hard hit as St. Paulians. What are we doing? Are we choosing to wear a gloomy face amidst the trials and temptations that we are going through? Or are we rejoicing in the trials that we are going through? Change of attitude. Changing our attitude. The word of God, when it uses the word test, it is synonymous to gold. It says, when we are going through the tests, it describes the genuineness of gold to be able to go through fire. Because we all understand the process of purification. When gold is being purified, it has to go through fire. And so as we are being told as Christians, as we are going through the seasons of fire, we must rejoice because we are being told perseverance builds character and character gives hope. That is in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 4. When you go through perseverance, our character is being built. And when our character is being built, then hope is as a result. Point number three. James tells these Christians, let perseverance finish its work. So that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I repeat, let perseverance finish its work. So that you may be mature and complete. Not lacking anything. Point number three. We are being told to remain through the trials. I understand. I'm trying to remember the valuation of the cosmetic world in the, in the world. I don't know how much you spend on cosmetics, especially women. But it is valued that the cosmetic industry is of great value in the world. People buy so much, so many things to be able to pimp up themselves. And I don't know, like right now we are all wearing masks. And at times we, were there, we wear masks in our lives. And we are being told to remain in the trial, not running from the, trial, the trials and temptations that we are going through. <laughs> We should remain in the trial, not running away and wearing masks, not running away and putting on makeup. We are being told to remain in the trial. Remaining steadfast through the trial will be effective in making you complete, a more complete person, more mature and more perfect. The reason as to why we have got people going through various phases of life is because they choose not to remain in the trial. They run away from problems. They don't want to face problems head on. We all understand facing issues head on is not easy. Christ himself, when he understood that he was going to be crucified, he asked even God himself, remove this cup from me. But he had to go through crucifixion that we may enjoy the salvation that we have today when you remain in your trial it makes you a more complete individual it makes you mature and makes you perfect don't run away from the trials remain in them for they will be able to ensure that you become more complete and more perfect point number four the word of God tells us in the book of James, if any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously without failing, without finding fault? It will be given to you, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and stable in all they do. Point number four, we are being told we must 
request for wisdom. There are so many teachings that are going around in this world, even in this country, that may make your faith to waver. And we are being told, since we are short of wisdom, we must ask from God, request wisdom from God. Not anyone here can stand and say that they are wise. We are all looking for wisdom every day because the tests of yesterday are not tests of today, neither will they be tests of tomorrow. And so we are being told for us to be able to, be, to ensure that we pass the test of life, we must constantly ask God to supply us with wisdom. We must tell God, God, give us your wisdom so that we may be able to pass the tests that we are all going through. James reminds us, how can we be able to pass the tests? How can we? The word of God reminds us and tells us, for all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. And hence the need to ensure that we ask for wisdom now and then from God. Do we want to pass the test? Do we all want to pass the test of life? The, our test in the walk of Christianity. Then we must do the following. Stand firm. Don't choose to be wavered. Number two, you must rejoice in the trials that you go through. You must change your attitude. Number f the other thing, we must remain through the trial. Don't run away. Tell God, God help me to be able to go through the tests that I'm going through. Because let us be reminded, our God does not place temptations before us. Our God tests us through the temptations that are set before us. And lastly, requesting for wisdom. We are reminded about Solomon, a young man who was asked by God, what do you want me to give you? And he chose to ask for wisdom. He chose to ask for wisdom. May God help us this morning to be able to pass the tests that we go through every day now and then so that we can become, we can come out victorious. As I conclude, Joe Biden, we all know that he's the oldest president in the U.S. history, born in the 1942. Joe Biden, when he was in school, he did not perform that well. His wife and his 13-month-old daughter were in an accident. His two sons were hospitalized. Joe Biden struggled with mental health. He even was at the verge of committing suicide. Joe Biden went through surgeries of brain aneurysm. Joe Biden's eldest son died in the year 2015. And still Joe Biden kept his eye on the price of becoming the president of the United States. All of us, we can be able to write down the trials and temptations that we have gone through. But will you, will you remain? Are your eyes focused on the price that is set before you? May God help us. May we not waver. May we become victorious in this race of Christianity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God bless you all.